Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynette. As we gather for worship today, I want to welcome you. My name's Kevin Lance. I'm the pastor here at Steel Memorial United Methodist Church in Barbersville, West Virginia. We're glad you're able to join us, whether you're here in person or whether you are connecting with us live streaming. We welcome you. And uh, just to kind of settle ourselves in place, will you bow your heads as I lead us in prayer this morning? Our good and gracious God, we have prepared our hearts and our minds for this, for this hour and this time as we settle into our places, knowing that we settle into your presence with eager hearts, open minds. We pray that you will speak to us again this great Sabbath day and that we might be guided by your Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just uh, as a reminder, uh, what we would ask you to uh, check in on your Facebook page, let people know that this place, this time of worship is important to you and uh, invite, uh, in a way, it invites others to come and worship with us as well. In the way of announcements, we just uh, want to keep, keep before you the golf outing uh, that we have on our calendar and that's a, a new location, so we want to be sure you know about that. Uh, the new location is at, uh, is it up there? It's not listed there, is it? Riviera, that's my bad. It's actually, I'm, I'm told that's a picture of Riviera Golf Course. How many, is that, is that true? Does that, can anybody testify whether you've seen that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Looks pretty nice. I don't know. I was gonna, I was gonna go out and be a part of that. Riviera Golf Course and uh, Jack. Do they need to contact you for those who are signing up with teams? Okay. So on the church app, you can sign up and you'll see an events place for that. Uh, but we want to be sure that that you are aware of that and and take advantage of that. I. Okay. And pay either place. Okay, so either pay Jack or the church. Very good. And you'll see where that money goes. It goes to, to part of it goes towards our uh, scouting program here at the church. And uh, I certainly hope that Nathan Kinker will be a part of that. I know that Nathan is playing in the final round of the West Virginia Amateur this morning. So uh, that's, hope that goes well for him. Uh, also on our, uh, on our, um, announcements where I want to remind you about our youth ministry Wednesdays uh, from 6 to 8 o'clock Wednesday evenings so keep that on the calendar for your children or grandchildren as uh, we continue with our youth ministry today we are baptizing one of our youth members uh, Lily Robinson the baptism will not take place here but we will go through the liturgy uh, for those who have uh, uh, answered the, and, and responded to the questions of our Christian faith throughout the, throughout the centuries uh, Lily joins with those uh, who are uh, a part of our United Methodist family everywhere so we'll share in that liturgy and then a, a private uh, immersion service uh, later th th this afternoon. Let me say a word about our, our COVID protocol. Uh, it, it appears that there is a, a, an uptick in the virus in our Cabell County area. In fact, there are more active cases this last week of July than there were the last week of July a year ago. And uh, we should be prepared to wear masks and practice social distancing in our church settings. So keep that in mind. We have, as I said, more active cases, COVID cases. Uh, the threat level rises in part because of our uh, vacation travels. And as we come home, we may uh, be carriers of, uh, uh, of lax protocol perhaps. So. Our prayer concerns over the last two weeks have included several hospitalized friends whose health is at great risk with COVID. 
The CDC is recommending masks for indoor meetings. And let's do this right. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So we want to uh, maintain good health for ourselves and for our families. In the way of our call to worship then this morning, I'll ask you to stand with me and uh, we'll, we have a call on the screen behind me and following our call, uh, our, uh, uh, Ashley's going to lead us in our worship singing. So let's, let's stand together. <clears throat> and uh, you all in, uh, in, are invited to recite what's on the bottom of the page in the bold. Jesus has called us to proclaim the good news of God's redeeming love. We come to worship as people who have heard and responded to God's call in Christ, Jesus Christ. Jesus has called us to heal the nations and bring hope to all we meet. We come from all races and cultures to be Christ's disciples. Jesus has called us to demonstrate compassion and commitment. We come as disciples to worship and gain strength for our journey. Let us worship God together. Alleluia. Ashley, if you'll start us off this morning. Good morning. Start off with open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
God is good all the time. Amen. We're going to slow it down just a little bit, and we're going to sing, uh, Lord, I Need You. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my Father, may we always be reminded of how much we need you, for we are nothing without the love of Jesus Christ. May you go before us and with us everywhere this week, and as we go our separate ways, may we be able to allow people to see your love through us in our actions and our words, that we might be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, and for it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
I'm shuffling enough papers here. I'm going to find my uh, reading here in just a second. Romans chapter 8. Our first reading is in Romans chapter 8, and it talks about the, uh, the power of the sinful nature versus the power of God's Spirit. And here we are as Christian people who have that sense of spiritual warfare. We have the old sinful nature still residing in us with the uh, power of God's Spirit reigning in our lives. But there's a reality we must face. And so beginning at, uh, boy, I have verse 5. Okay, good. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you, you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let me step down in the front here. I'm going to, in just a moment, ask a couple friends to come up and join me here. But let me lead you into your hymnals to page 33, if you would. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. And this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today it's my pleasure to invite Lily Robinson to come forward with her family. I know mom, uh, mom and dad, Jason and Carrie Robinson and JC are here, and grandmother and grandfather as well, step-grandfather. You guys want to come on up? So what we described in the scriptures from Romans chapter 8, Lily, you have to be front and center. <laughs> You know, this is, you know, and we're actually seeing a living example of what we read about in Romans chapter 8, where the old nature is put to death because of the Spirit of Christ. Lily has invited Christ to, to live and reign as Lord in her life. Uh, uh, well, it's been several, a couple months ago, several months ago now. And we get the, uh, the opportunity just to uh, celebrate that and to uh, initiate her into the Christian way. Lily, I just would remind you, as I would remind everybody, that baptism is only the first step in our spiritual formation. 
there is so much more for us as Christian people as we grow in our understanding of Christ what he has for us, what he, how he wants to bless us and lead and guide us. And so I'm on uh, page 34 now, paragraph 4, and on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, would you respond, I do. And do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord with believers from throughout the ages all across the world. If so, will you say, I do? Amen. Thank you. And then, uh, according to the grace that's given to you, we, Lily and I had a chance to talk about these vows that, that she's uh, uh, agreeing to. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, I will. Okay. Well, congregation, we also have a place for, for you to respond because... Um, People don't become Christians in a vacuum. It is through the body of Christ. And it is from the support and the encouragement, uh, the, the leadership and uh, servanthood that we demonstrate, that we walk victoriously. So paragraph 8 on page 35, my, first, of, first of all me, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We, these people, with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others we will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our great and glorious God, we are so thankful for this opportunity to share and to celebrate with the family that gathers this day around Lily. We are thankful for what her acknowledgement and her declaration of faith means to her personally what it means to us as a church and to your kingdom. Your spirit is alive, alive among us and within us and within Lily. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. We pray that you will bless her and her family and that you will guide their steps into your truth in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you, and we'll let you be seated. Yeah. <clears throat> How about birthdays and anniversaries? How do you feel about that, Lynette? I'm good. You're good? You, do you have an August birthday or anniversary? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get back to you then. We like to celebrate some of those special days, uh, August birthdays, and first of all birthdays. If you have a birthday in August, would you stand? We've prepared a little ditty. Let's just sing. <laughs> birthday anniversaries stay standing any other anniversaries all right we're okay yeah all right yeah don't leave them alone up here now let's <laughs> sing to our friends bless.
in the way of our prayer concerns, I want to lift up uh, several that uh, are recent and new over the past week or so. Uh, Becky Dameron suffered a fall, a broken foot, a broken heel from a recent fall. So let's remember Becky in our prayers. Um, Tyler Cole, uh, hospitalized in critical condition with complications from COVID. Um, also, Angie Wetzel, a friend to some in our, commu in our congregation who has COVID. Um, Gene, I'm going to ask you to tell me the name of the nurse who died of COVID from the hospital. Okay. 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 And, and Carrie knows the last name. Okay, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> because uh, Joanne, 66 years old, uh, was an active nurse at uh, St. Mary's Hospital. And I uh, saw her name in the obituaries today who died of COVID. So let's remember these families and more that I, I imagine that, that you know. We all, yes. Okay. And that's Tom, Tom Yeager. Okay, thank you. So uh, Tom Yeager on our prayer list was having surgery today for some, cleaning out some uh, glass uh, from his foot and pray that that goes well and uh, if there's any infection that, that God will bring healing uh, for him. We want to continue to remember the family uh, and our church family with the loss of Peggy Mamula. We think of Eldon and Sherry Paul, whose son died unexpectedly last week. Becky Chenoweth and her family. Becky's dad, Pete Burris, who died uh, after having had surgery. And... No, he was in the hospital. It was Marlene Black's brother, Bob Bailey, who died unexpectedly following recent heart bypass surgery. So we have uh, all these. Uh, are there any others that you want us to remember? Yeah, Carrie. And that her first name was Heather. Uh, being treated for breast cancer, a 44-year-old mother with four, four kids at home. Thank you for that. Back here. Is that right? Okay, so uh, Dick and Lou, uh, Luella's uh, son, Zachary, who's been diagnosed. What would I say? Grandson, thank you. Diagnosed with COVID. Becky Ross and her family, thank you for that. Vicki? Okay, so a friend who's age 96 having surgery this morning, another concern for us. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, uh, encourage you also to check in on the uh, church app as it has a prayer wall. We list some of these as well. Chris up here in the balcony. Okay, that's the Jenkins family. Okay, so a wife who has gone in two months from a being diagnosed to can with cancer now in hospice care. Yeah, Gina. A praise, good. Well, great to hear. I'm going to repeat that for others who didn't. Gina initiated a concern for a family that took in a three-year-old boy. She, uh, the, the church responded uh, greatly, at providing a, a car seat was something I think I saw involved in that, and, and so much, uh, so much other things. And and uh, we we thank you all and praise God for uh, for your care and your compassion in sharing. Let's, let us uh, bow our heads together as we pray this morning.
<clears throat> oh God, we come before you this day. You know with many with heavy hearts, we hear about the bad news. It's good to hear good news as well. But we express these, these concerns to you, Lord, because there is an urgency within our own lives for your healing, for healing through those who become instruments in your hands. We're thankful for those healing places, the hospitals and doctor's offices and homes where people are, uh, are finding care and compassion. But we pray, Lord, too, that your spirit the Spirit of your Son might walk through those rooms in the hallways to touch the lives of those we name today, to bring, to bring strength, to bring comfort, that each one will know they are not alone, that they might sense the depth of your presence and your love so they find courage and faith. You, God, who never change, we come before you this day to seek change that only you can bring to wounded hearts and broken spirits. From the bumps and bruises we receive through daily living, we come to this place and time to be transformed, cleansed, and healed. O oh Lord, who was and is and is to come, give us faith to become more fully the reflection of your love you have called us to become. And breathe on us the breath of transforming life, the Holy Spirit of Christ Jesus, as we gather in anticipation of your work in our lives. In Christ's great name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let me invite any of our young children for a children's story time to come on down. <coughs> got everybody's name in my head. It's only there for a second, though. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you guys. I, uh, I wanted to start just by asking you if, you if you might tell me something new that you have learned this summer or over the past year, uh, maybe when, when you were last in school, something new that you learned. Oliver, anything? Huh? Okay. May, uh, let me, uh, how about, uh, has anybody learned to multiply? Yeah? Two times two? Four? Good. 73 times 180, 186? Okay. That's a little hard right now. We'll work on that later. How many of you have learned fractions? Have you learned about fractions yet? I forget how old you are. Uh, okay. Um, how, how many of you have learned to tell time recently? Okay, good, good. And how about, yeah, all right, you're getting there. How many of you, uh, how many of you have learned to tie your shoe recently? <gasps> good, good. I still remember where I was and who taught me to tie my shoe. It was just a week or two ago, so it wasn't that hard. How many of you have learned to ride a bike? Okay, all right, some of you, good. Without training wheels? That's when it gets hard. Well, you're going to get there. I know you will. You, look, you might get a scrape right there. That's usually what happens to me. Oh, a skateboard. That's good. Don't ever let me on a skateboard. Okay? Okay. How many of you have, know what your vowels are in the, in the alphabet? So can you shout out what's a vowel? Tell me what one is. A. E. 
I O U and sometimes Y and W. Good. How many of you have uh, read a story recently? Okay. Some of you like to read? Good, good. So you've learned something new in all that. And maybe uh, some of you have learned to swing a baseball bat or kick a, soft, a soccer ball. Yeah. Or, um, well, I don't know. It sounds like most everybody here has been learning something new. You know, it's hard. I don't know if you've ever noticed, though. It, it can be hard to learn something new when you're distracted. Um, Maddie, do you, you know, do you know what it means to be distracted? Can, you, can anyone tell us, just share with it? What, what does it mean to be distracted? Alex? Yeah, when your attention's being focused on something else. Henry? Yeah, when someone else bothers you. I just wondered if Madison, Maddie has that problem. Do, do, does anybody ever bother you? whose name is Henry? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. He confessed. Okay. That's hard to learn something. If you're reading and you're doing your homework, um, Bree, do you have to have a quiet place to do your schoolwork just so your mind can focus and, and concentrate? Me too. Me too. I, some people can do it listening to music or, you know, talking on the phone. I, 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 but distractions really bother me. Did you know that God has things he wants us to know? Yeah, he does. He, he wants us to know that. He, in fact, when I read the Bible, I keep reading this word, understand this. You are to grow in understanding. You need to know. You need, you, we, are learning, we are learning this. And, and, and the Bible is encouraging me to learn more. And, and, and whatever I'm reading about. But it always has new, new things, new lessons for me to learn. And I'm sure there are new things for you to, to learn as well. I want to give you, uh, I don't have a whole bunch of these, but maybe I have enough for each family of children. I'm going to give these special glasses. Okay, whoops. There, JC, into the uh, Nybert girls. There, sheesh. Let's see if we can get one loose here. There, there, and double there. Um, boy, I, I'm going. Uh, let me see. You, you four, or you three share, and you three share. Put the glasses on. I want you to put you these glasses on, and then I wouldn't. I want to ask you. I don't know if I need to turn off the lights. But if you look at the candle up here with those glasses on, you're going to take a turn and then share it with somebody else. Put, put those on. When you look at the candle, what, is there anything? What, what, Alex? It says Jesus. Is that right, Winnie? It's, wow. Yeah, okay. Now pass the glasses to somebody else so others get a, get a chance to see. Is that not weird? Oh, here, Henry, you can, you can grab those and uh, make sure. Uh, Luke, have you seen yet? Okay. But did everybody see when you look at the candles, the flame? It also works with uh, Christmas tree lights. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, what's interesting is that we need to have a special ability to see some things that may be hidden right before our very eyes. Who knew? Who knew that flame said Jesus? But did you know Jesus said he is the light of the world? By that he means he brings understanding for everyone in the world. Now, if we didn't have those glasses, it's like being distracted. All I, all I see without those glasses is a flame. But if I focus with those glasses on, then I see something in that flame. And that's like, that's like the Bible. The Bible has something more for us to learn. And we have to read the Bible with Jesus' eyes. With the, with the eyes of Jesus. And we need help with that. You'll, you know, you'll need, your, you'll need your parents to help you in reading and understanding. It says Jesus Christ. All right. That's, 
that's a pretty good candle, isn't it? So, uh, so keep in mind that we need help. I want you to ask your parents to help you understand the Bible. And I want you to remember that our Sunday school classes are disciple, disciple classes. Jesus had 12 disciples around him as he taught them for the three years he had before he was, before he was taken away in this world. So you want to, so you want to be a part of your uh, Sunday school class and uh, All Stars for Jesus uh, on Wednesdays. Those are our disciple programs that some of the, the that the church has, and uh, we want to we want you to continue to grow in your understanding. All right, let me say a prayer with you guys. The, the, then the, with, with the glasses, the words are there. That's when you focus. When you take the glasses off, that's when you're distracted. It's like being distracted, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, every family should take one. If you don't have one of those at home, take one. I'll have to get a new one uh, to make sure I cover, cover everyone. I don't know that I have any more, um, but let me, let me just say a prayer for you. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the children of our church, and we pray that you will guide each one, each of those here, that they might grow to honor you in their life as they uh, seek to love you and to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll let you go. Do we have someone? I think we have somebody downstairs for Children's Church. At least I was told that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope Jim, Jim Bogus, can you confirm whether we have someone downstairs for Children's Church? Okay, yeah, Christy's down there. All right, thank you. All right, very good. We want to sing just a, a brief chorus, uh, brief, relatively speaking. Glorify thy name as we move into our preaching time this morning.
glorify thy name glorify thy name glorify thy name in all the earth glorify thy name glorify Jesus began his ministry by proclaiming the kingdom of God. Jesus walked onto the public stage, and the Bible says from that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, has come near. Christian, you are citizens of a new world order. You are citizens of God's kingdom. I hope that doesn't surprise most of you. It's important that we look at some of the implications of our Christian character. Your spiritual relationship in Jesus Christ should make you different. So what is this kingdom living like? Well, let's take a look, but let me lead us real quick. Father, let us not be casual in the time we spend in your word. And may you speak to us as we would open our hearts and our minds, not only to hear, but to believe and to act in accordance with your presence, your glory, your holiness and love. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is so incredibly different from anything we've ever experienced. In fact, one of the messages of the New Testament to the Christian is to be in the world, but not of the world. We have a mission in the world, but don't become attached to the ways of the world. But listen, listen. We are so deeply attracted or attached to the things of the world. It's hard for us to understand kingdom living. And Jesus knew it would be hard. In fact, listen to what he taught about kingdom character. It's a passage that will be familiar to you in Matthew chapter 13. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, Some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have roots, deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up, and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. In this parable of the 
kingdom character has potential in every human heart. It, as Jesus describes seed that's cast over the earth. But this, this word, the, the word of God or the seed, fails to produce a plant in three out of the four soil types. And that makes sense to a lot of us because we have to wonder what benefit the kingdom of God brings when the kingdom of America offers such wealth, opportunity, prosperity, security, strength, and power. But here's our key for the day. The kingdom of America offers so many signs and wonders and miracles. We already live in a dynasty, the greatest political economic kingdom with the great, greater comforts and freedoms and conveniences than any nation in the history of the world. The kingdom of God seems unnecessary. Why? Would we deny ourselves, take up a cross, renounce our wealth, or love our enemies? That's not the way most Americans have been trained to live. And here's another dilemma. In the shadow of the great world kingdoms and political powers, there can be so little evidence of God's kingdom. We see such suffering from churches in Canada. We read about a week ago, Christian churches that are being burned. We read about the chaos in, in Haiti and South, uh, South Africa and Nigeria. We look at problems at home with poverty and drug and, and sexual addictions destroying lives and relationships. The growing gap between the haves and the have-nots, the rising cost of health care, the warring world religions, our prayers for those who are sick, and sometimes we don't receive what we want. Many don't see any evidence for the kingdom of God. Onto that stage, Jesus stepped, explaining that not all the people who hear the story of hope will understand. So let's go back to the parable. First of all, the soil with the seed falling on the path is described as one who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. Are we expecting or experiencing God's kingdom? Jesus seems to say there are many who receive the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ, but they just don't believe they need anything from God. So many of our children grow up on the wisdom of the world completely unaware how rich their life can be with mercy, practicing forgiveness, through giving and loving and serving, and the promise of eternal life. We teach our children the importance of success with a hearty career and hard work, and that's all good. But let's not fail to teach service or sacrifice or simplicity and humility. Let's not fail to teach how to give away your money, how to tithe. We want the best for our kids, but we may push them far from kingdom character and the kingdom of God. So, the one who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it will have no interest in the kingdom of God because they found a way to prosper in the kingdom of this world. I have to admit it can be hard 
to believe in the kingdom of God, when we live in a world that offers so many vivid thrills and experiences, it can be hard to believe a Jesus killed on a cross 2,000 years ago has anything to offer that others would find desirable today. But Jesus said, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. He was saying, we, we won't rely upon signs and miracles for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. Now listen. God offers to touch you at a deeper level of living than what you often see and feel. Because God's kingdom reaches into your interior life. And that's where I find such great satisfaction, knowing that He's my Lord and Savior. And if I have little else, I have Christ. So number one, that's the seed that's scattered on the hard, well-worn path. Number two, Jesus described seed as though it fell upon rocky ground. Such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the, that person immediately falls away. The tragedy of the church's ministry is that we can be slow to offer new disciples a path to grow in their spiritual faith following their conversion. There's a moment in time when those who come to Christ are so agreeable and ready for spiritual formation with that energy and excitement but the new believer will soon discover uh, conflict in their own life because the old temptations eventually come knocking again. They discover that there's no place to include their old habits and their old pleasures, their old sinful practices in the kingdom of God. And isn't that some of the, some of the trouble or persecution that comes? the tug from those old worldly pleasures. Evangelist Wilbur Chapman once said, it's not the ship in the water, but the water in the ship that sinks it. And so it's not the Christian in the world, but it's the world in the Christian that constitutes danger. The church must help new kingdom children find victory over their sin and over their past. Now number three, the, the real dangerous soil for seed was, was among the thorns. And I wonder if this describes your own life today. Seeds among thorns. This is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and so that seed yields nothing. If we read that in a different translation in the, in the message, it reads like this. Weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard, and nothing comes of it. It's those distractions. It's the distractions in the world that confound the believer who's trying to grow in Christ. Now this sounds like a story I heard about how some hunters capture monkeys in Africa. Tra uh, trappers hollow out a gourd. They cut a small hole uh, on the side of the gourd 
and they fill the gourd up with some kind of food that appeals to, to the monkey, and they fasten the gourd to a tree or to a pole, and the monkeys then will reach inside the gourd and grab a fistful of that, oh, that magnificent whatever it is, and they hold on to it real tight. Of course, their fist now is full, so it's bigger than the hand that went in. It's a lot larger, and they can't get their hand out. It's the lure of wanting. And here's the interesting part. Most monkeys will not open their hands because they don't want to release the food. But they will not open their hands so they can pull out their hand and run free even when the trapper comes to place them in a cage. Their tight-fisted living traps them by their own greed or lust, wanting more. And I wonder if we have become a little bit like that. We grab what we like and we hold on, we hold on. We hold on until we are trapped for sin's destruction. We have to be different, Christian. We have to be different. That's the attitude for the one who belongs to the kingdom of God. This is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. The kingdom of God demands that its loyal patriots be different. Why? Because you are different. We have to be strong in our faith. We can't be watered down by distractions in a fractured, deceitful world. There was a period after Moses brought God's people out of slavery in Egypt in, into the wilderness, and they're making their way to the promised land. That wicked life of the Egyptian culture behind them and the wild life of the uh, idolatry in Canaan in front of them, God warned his people, you have to be Different. Let me read where that comes from in Leviticus chapter 18. The Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I am the Lord your God. So do not act like the people in Egypt where you used to live or like the people of Canaan where I am taking you. You must not imitate their way of life. You must obey all my regulations and be careful to obey my decrees for I am the Lord your God. If you obey my decrees and my regulations, you will find life through them. I am the Lord. Now you might want to argue. I just want to be ordinary. I just want to be, why can't I just be an ordinary teenager? I just want to be ordinary, an ordinary man or an ordinary woman. But you weren't made for ordinary. Ordinary is the wide path, the easy path that leads to deception. And when Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, he explained, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life. And there are few who find it. It was ordinary people who had no, no need for Jesus. Ordinary people who turned their backs when Pilate asked, who he should set free, who would die that day, Jesus or Barabbas, who was a murderer. It was ordinary people who, gather, who refused to get involved. It was ordinary people who herded Jews from Polish ghettos onto trains that were bound for extermination camps. It was ordinary neighbors 
who looked the other way when the smoke and the odor of burning flesh came from the chimneys of Auschwitz and Treblinka. It was ordinary people who passed by on the other side of the road when their neighbor has been beaten and wounded or robbed. It was ordinary citizens who refused to search for the lost sheep or the lost coin because it didn't really matter that much. But those who trust in God, those who trust in God live as if they have seen his kingdom, as if God's kingdom is real, as if living in one world, they believe in another world, a greater promise. Kingdom children live as if Jesus was right, as if God really does reign within all over creation. Kingdom children live as if when praying, we're actually standing in the presence of the Almighty. Kingdom children live as if everything we say and think and do is known by our Creator. Kingdom children live as if confession of sin really does renew our relationship to the Holy One. Kingdom children live as if Jesus really did rise from the dead. Kingdom children re live as if the Spirit of Christ lives and dwells among us. Kingdom children live as if the kingdom of God is within us. Are you living as if the kingdom of God is extraordinary? We are not ordinary people. We have extraordinary citizenship, extraordinary vision, extraordinary optimism, extraordinary values, purpose, and mission, extraordinary reward. You gain more kingdom power in you every time you act with obedience in the character of Christ. Now listen, listen. Kingdom character will become stronger, more powerful for you, within you every time you say yes when the Holy Spirit prompts you to give or to call or to sacrifice or to serve, to share, to love. Choosing forgiveness over resentment and kindness over impatience. We want to identify kingdom character over the next several weeks in order to identify the target and know the direction in which to aim our lives. And as we make Jesus like a friend on Facebook, take time to know him. Download his files into your soul. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about the message he sent to you in this, this great book, which is the all-time bestseller in the history of the world. As you share your life with him and become familiar with his counsel and his desire, you will find a new quality to your life, new character taking shape in your mind and heart. And we all need help with kingdom character. And so I hope you'll find time to surround yourselves with like-minded believers who will pledge to protect you through their prayers, enlist the help of others, enter into kingdom protective services, through a new prayer life and faithfulness in worship and humble confession of sin. Now the three soils from which the seed fails to grow represents misunderstanding, uncertainty and intimidation, and wrong values. Jesus invites you to invest your all in kingdom living. And so in prayer, 
in prayer. Ask the Father for wisdom to understand, a desire for his best, and courage to live as a child of the King. And we're going to go to prayer here with a prayer on the screen in front of you as we pray together. Let us share. We admit, Good Shepherd, that we do not always follow you willingly or enthusiastically. Other voices call, other paths invite, other distractions attract, other pleasures beckon, yet we know deep down that only as we follow you can we find true safety, true happiness, true peace, true confidence, and true meaning. Forgive us then for our wandering spirit and our unclean obedience and lead us in the paths of your goodness. Amen. Friends, with that prayer of confession, Hear these words that come from David of the Old Testament. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. That's something God desires to do. Forgiveness, mercy, transformation, creating kingdom character in all of you. As we close our service, we'll stand for our closing song, The Lamb of God. And uh, that just to remember that uh, we, uh, prayer time at the altar is uh, open for any of you who would like to come forward to pray this morning.
Well, friends, go forward into the world knowing that you are the light of the world, you as followers of Christ, you who have the Spirit dwelling within you. Go in peace, and may God's peace be with you. Amen. Thank you.